Lebanon has become, for all intents and purposes, a failed state. There's more and more of the low or middle class people who are getting hungry on a daily basis, unfortunately. A new reality in a country where nearly 80% of people are poor. Today, let's talk about Lebanon, a nation renowned for its azure Mediterranean coast, snow-capped mountains, and ancient heritage, is silently gasping for breath, brought to its knees not by war or disaster, but a cataclysmic economic decline unmatched in the last century. Once dubbed the Switzerland of the Middle East, today it's a failed country where people can't afford gas, food, electricity, and the top minds have been leaving the country. The Lebanese pound, the lifeline of the nation, has lost a staggering 97% of its value over the last few years. This isn't a simple economic decline, it's a freefall. A seismic shock that has sent tremors across every household, every street, every heart. Just in the 90s, Lebanon was a prosperous place so with its economy standing tall among the giants of the region. A nation built upon the bedrock of a thriving banking industry, it boasted one of the largest GDPs per capita in the Middle East. Millions of Lebanese who once lived lives of relative comfort and dignity now find themselves losing everything they have. With the plummeting currency, the cost of basic necessities have skyrocketed, stripping the people of their means to survive. In the face of such desperation, some families are resorting to the unthinkable, giving their children away to orphanages simply because they cannot afford to put food on the table. In fact, things have gotten so bad that at one point the government tried taxing WhatsApp video conversations. The tragedy doesn't end there. Today, citizens are driven to rob their own banks, not out of greed, but in a desperate attempt to reclaim what is rightfully theirs. Billions have been smuggled out of the country by these very bankers that were meant to safeguard the wealth of the nation. The custodians turned robbers are now comfortably nestled in expensive properties worldwide, oblivious to the ruin they left behind. Lebanon's fall isn't a mere statistic in the annals of global economics. It is a heart-wrenching story of a nation's dreams turned to dust, of prosperity replaced with poverty, and of joy replaced with despair. It is a narrative of a country betrayed by its custodians, let down by the very institutions that were meant to protect and uplift it. This is the tale of Lebanon's fall, a poignant saga of loss, longing, and a desperate yearning for light at the end of a seemingly endless tunnel. Let's dive in. In 1975, a feud emerged between Christians and Muslims, ripping through the heart of the nation, plunging it into a ruthless civil war. For 15 arduous years, the land of the Cedars became a battleground, a theater of blood and despair. The war claimed the lives of approximately 120,000 Lebanese, sowing the seeds of a grim legacy that would haunt the nation for decades to come. By 1989, the torment finally ended, and from the ashes of conflict, a new Lebanon arose, with a political structure that was seemingly a beacon of hope. A fragile balance was struck, offering political representation to five different sects, an arrangement intended as a temporary solution for just three years. However, time turned this provisional arrangement into a permanent fixture, laying the foundation for an unprecedented era of political corruption. In the aftermath of the war, Lebanon found itself on the precipice of ruin and needed to rebuild. The international community, moved by the nation's plight, responded with open-hearted generosity. Billions of dollars in foreign aid poured into the country, accompanied by strategic incentives to lure foreign investment. As if a phoenix rising from the ashes, Lebanon began to bloom once again. From 1990 to 2000, the nation witnessed a miraculous resurgence. The Lebanese GDP skyrocketed by an astounding 400%. The Lebanese pound, reborn from the shadows of war, was pegged to the US dollar by 1997, cementing the country's economic renaissance. As Lebanon's economy boomed, the living standards of its people rose in tandem. The wounds of the civil war seemed to heal, the tragedies of the past becoming distant memories. Amid the euphoria of this newfound prosperity, the rampant political corruption became an uncomfortable truth that the citizens chose to overlook. Now let's get into how the government insiders and the bankers blew it all up. In the grand theater of Lebanon's burgeoning prosperity, a sinister drama was unfolding behind the scenes. 
a new alliance was formed between the politicians who held the nation's reins and the bankers who held its wealth. Together, they devised an audacious plan to usher in more wealth into the country, a scheme that would end in catastrophe. Understanding the scheme necessitates understanding the three key players on the stage. First, we have the government divided into various sects. Secondly, we have the central bank, who is the guardian of the nation's financial stability. And thirdly, we have the commercial banks, the custodian of the public's money. To foster growth, Lebanon needed to increase foreign reserves into its central bank. A lure was thrown to global investors. They would issue a whopping 10% in returns on U.S. denominated bonds, an offer far surpassing any returns provided by the rest of the world. The bait was taken and the money began pouring in to Lebanon's commercial banks. These funds were then funneled to the central bank only to be lent to the government and finally landing in the laps of the corrupt politicians. But such high stake gambles carry great risks and Lebanon was no exception. Its debt to GDP ratio soared beyond a staggering 100%. The country lured into a false sense of prosperity was teetering on the edge of an economic disaster. All the while, the essential infrastructure, electricity, clean water, fuel was being ignored. The capital that should have been invested in building a stronger nation was instead lining the pockets of the politically corrupt. The gleam of short-term prosperity was in truth a mirage, obscuring the harsh reality of a nation being sold out by its own caretakers. As if the agonies of economic mismanagement weren't enough, a new community fell upon Lebanon. The year was 2011 and war broke out in neighboring Syria. The conflict sent a tidal wave of refugees into Lebanon with 1.5 million additional souls seeking sanctuary within its borders. The already strained resources were stretched thin. The dwindling dollar reserves were depleting and Lebanon needed a lifeline to sustain its imports. Enter Riyadh Salome, a former Merrill Lynch banker, appearing like a knight in shining armor who was named as the governor of Lebanon Central Bank. He proposed a solution, offer the commercial banks extravagant returns provided they brought foreign dollars into the country. Yet the supposed salvation was merely a facade for a perilous Ponzi scheme, accelerating Lebanon's already soaring debt, which was of course denominated in US dollars. As the scheme unfolded, it cast a dark shadow over the country, inflating the liabilities of the banks and the government. The cost of servicing this burgeoning debt consumed a staggering one third of the government's budget. By 2011, the bubble had burst. The prime minister resigned and Lebanon found itself suddenly marooned with no foreign investment and a towering wall of debt. The final blow came swiftly. Inflation, the invisible thief that erodes the value of hard-earned money, skyrocketed into triple digits. Lebanon, a nation that had once stood proud and prosperous, was left reeling. Its economy ravaged, its people facing an uncertain and daunting future. And then in Beirut, Lebanon, on August 4th, 2020, things suddenly got worse. An explosion rocks the port of Beirut at 6.06 p.m. The explosion is so massive that it registered as a magnitude 3.3 seismic event with the impact felt across the country, as well as in Syria, Israel, Jordan, and Palestine. So massive that it was heard more than 240 kilometers away in Cyprus. The cause of the explosion, a stockpile of ammonium nitrate equivalent to 1.1 kilotons of TNT was stored at the port along with a toxic mix of oil, kerosene, fireworks, and hydrochloric acid. Incredibly, the stockpile had been there for seven years, a literal ticking time bomb, after a ship en route to Mozambique had some trouble and refused to pay the parking bill at the port. The explosion occurred in two stages. An initial explosion sent partially combusted ammonium nitrate into the sky, indicating that the blast wasn't intentional. Less than a minute later, the ammonium nitrate detonated, producing a shock wave that tore through Beirut faster than the speed of sound. This wave, which caused a vacuum effect, led to a large-scale destruction, tearing apart buildings, blowing out doors and windows, and turning debris into Sharpnel. The blast left 218 people dead, 7,000 injured, 300,000 homeless, and caused an estimated US $15 billion in property damage. It also led to the resignation of the prime minister of the country and the Lebanese cabinet after it was revealed that repeated warning signs had been ignored, leading to mass protests. In 
In terms of the economy, the explosion, excluding the humanitarian disaster it was, was one of the worst things that could have happened to a nation already struck by turmoil. Following a 95% devaluation of its currency and years of economic contraction, Lebanon's middle class has nearly disappeared. Rising hunger and poverty have become widespread. Food insecurity is particularly concerning, with almost half of all citizens in Lebanon admitting they have run out of food before they had money to purchase more. Lebanon's taxation system, described as highly regressive, compounds the situation. There is no wealth tax code and corporate taxes are among the lowest worldwide, well below OECD averages. And if you thought, hey, maybe they can just withdraw some dollars from their bank accounts, you would have been wrong. Lebanese banks are like Vegas magicians. They're experts in making money vanish. Banks in Lebanon now only allow limited cash withdrawals in US dollars to those who have US dollars in their accounts, further restricting the purchasing power of the majority. Last year, in 2022, the IMF reached out a helping hand with a $3 billion deal. Naturally, it had strings attached, including restructuring the country's collapsed banking sector and improving transparency mechanisms, something the ruling class has struggled to implement for obvious reasons. One economist commented that the $3 billion will hardly be sufficient to restore the country considering the size of the losses in the financial sector, which are estimated to be at least $70 billion. But Lebanon's economic decline isn't just about figures on a balance sheet or an economic model gone wrong. It is a story of lives disrupted, dreams dashed, and a nation brought to its knees not by external forces, but from within. Lebanon's economy, once the envy of the Middle East, has become the Achilles heel, burdened by an albatross of unserviceable debt, a convoluted banking system, and a government more invested in its survival than that of the people. The fall of the Lebanese pound, the exponential rise of inflation, the depletion of foreign reserves, all paint a grim picture of an economy in free fall. The consequences of years of neglect and irresponsibility. In the wake of the catastrophic Beirut explosion and the onslaught of socio-political turmoil, the middle class, once the backbone of the economy, has been eroded. Poverty and hunger have become common, and economic contraction has become the norm rather than the exception. The dismal state of affairs has been further exasperated by an oppressive taxation system that favors the affluent at the expense of the masses. The recent lifeline extended by the IMF, well a glimmer of hope, is far from sufficient. The bailout tied with the prerequisite of restructuring the banking sector and improving transparency mechanisms is a hard pill for the ruling class to swallow. Rebuilding Lebanon's economy requires not just financial aid, but an overhaul of the system that allowed such a catastrophe to occur in the first place. Unfortunately, the exodus of talented individuals due to the crisis compounds the challenge. The road to recovery is steep and arduous, with the need for a comprehensive transformation of the government system at its heart. As it stands, the fate of Lebanon hangs in the balance, an uncertainty that casts a long shadow over its future. All right, everybody, let me know what you think in the comments section. Have you ever been to Lebanon before? Do you think that Lebanon can pull themselves out of this mess? What do you think needs to happen here? Also, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a big favor, smash that like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell. All right, everybody, I love you all. So guys, we just recently launched this channel and we noticed that 99.9% .9 of our viewers are not subscribed. So if you enjoyed this video, we need your help in growing this channel. By subscribing, that would help us keep the lights on and make sure that our crews have jobs in these uncertain times. So please hit that subscribe button and we promise to make more quality videos that I'm sure you're gonna love.